So we finally finished watching The 100. Uh, all seven seasons of it, and uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, spoiler warnings, obviously. You saw the title of this video. If you were spoiled, it's your own damn fault. I guess I'll just start off by saying, like, I liked it. I liked the ending. I liked how it went around. It did have a little bit of a weird, you know, a few were twists and everything in it. And a few things that I didn't quite agree with. But honestly, all together, I thought it was a nice, well-rounded ending. Yeah, I mean, I did have my own, like, you know, what the f you know, uh, concepts with it, like are my, my own like disagreements with it, like in the sense of like how, how certain characters played out. Some of them were great. Some of them were fantastic. Some of them were like, what? Why did you do that? Like, and uh, yeah, like, I guess uh, I can just start off by like, uh, see, how does it go? So the disciples, you know, they were, you know, well, they're a fucking cult. Let's just get this be real. They were a freaking cult and, you know, a typical religious cult um, with futuristic technology, no less. But I mean, I, I guess what, what annoyed me throughout the whole last season is they constantly mention um, that there's a last war that they have to fight. And it just brings a natural question into my mind, you know, which, you know, would hopefully have brought up been brought up by any one of the other characters. Huh. Last war. What's that about? Especially when like all of our main characters from Earth, you know, like Clark and friends and, and you know, all the grounders and everybody else would have been there like, huh, well, we lost a lot of our people and a lot of our home to wars, but there's a last one? Huh, can you tell us more? I mean, like, I only went through the last season once, but as far as I can remember, nobody ever bothered to explain. They are just like, no, there's a last war. We have to fight it. And nobody was ever just like, what fucking last war? <laughs> nobody was ever just like, like, no, we need details if you're going to be, you'll get us to be on board with that. You know, and they're just like, no, last war must be fought. And like, that was just mm, pissing me off because I hate when shows do that. Like, I figured this one was actually trying to do it the whole time to like, you know, just drag that little what's the last war thing, you know, about and, you know, drag it on all the way through like the end. And they're like, oh, this is the last war, you know, and I would that would piss me off, too, if that was the case. In the end, it turns out it wasn't even a freaking war. I mean, there was a sort of like mini battle at the end, but yeah, it turned out one of the random characters just out of nowhere just like, yes, like, huh, these people who have been translating this, you know, sacred uh, metal ball text or whatever, you know, for thousands of years, they got it wrong. I think they were, you know, you're supposed to, you got to read it in Korean, yo. And it's just, he just like figures it out that, it, you know, what they've been transcribing or anything, what they what they've been come to believe wasn't a war that they had to fight. It was just a test. You gotta figure out a test. So they got that completely wrong all the time. One thing that the disciple people did get right was that there was what's called as transcendence. Or you basically, it's kind of like going to heaven, I guess, or something like a similar concept, but by aliens. Aliens that we barely get any description to. They're just some kind of higher being, you know, aliens that are there and not there, as they, I guess they mentioned. But the concept of those aliens was a, not, it wasn't really too much like, oh, you're going too far. No, it wasn't really that bad. Really. It was fine and everything. But even at the end, you know, when Clark met these aliens and everything, and they were like, by the way, we have a, we have a gig, you know, uh, you come to us and then you activate, you know, a test. And if you activate the test, it starts and it won't stop. You are going to either pass it and all of you will be transcended. You know, you'll be like, you know, little tree angel things and everything where you feel no life or no, no sorry, no uh, pain and no, uh, oh, you just don't die. Like you're just, you know, being a consciousness. Like if, any, if anybody's seen Doctor Who, I mean, like I, that's, that should ring a bell. Like that's exactly what the Time Lords were trying to do at the end. <laughs> kind of ironically during their last war with the uh daleks well at least I, I haven't seen the the most recent season with um the what 13th doctor the female doctor um but anyways like you know like that, that's what the time lords were trying to do too they were going to activate something that turned them into beings of pure consciousness and uh i guess it would kill the daleks too and i guess it would kill everybody kill everything and this Dal and time lords would just be floating conscious things in a infinite universe from then on uh anyway so that's what these aliens were doing in the hundred and I, I mean clark i actually like that like in that part in that end too i'll mention real quick like that clark called them out and uh, granted like you know it was kind of like a little 
subject because these were like just like way higher advanced you know beings in the universe yeah she was like dude what the fuck you know we we did what we had to do constantly if i didn't do what i had to do i would be dead people that i know would be dead the you know like the opposition of what Clark clark had to go through throughout the entire freaking show would have just killed her at some point killed everyone in love and she just wouldn't be there and they made it a point to let you know that people who are dead don't transcend so yeah like you know your transcendence the, the transcendence concept is completely pointless if clark had not been basically a genocidal like warrior in a sense that she was she didn't always make the right decisions and everything but she did what she had to do that's what the fucking show is based off i did what i had to do i, I agreed with her so much in that part even though again like she was telling the aliens you know fuck you guys you know i, I did what i had to do who the hell are you to actually judge us and everything and i mean it like and the other the other side of that coin is it doesn't matter they're still higher beings and they still are going to just completely massacre and murder all humans humans or you know like extinction or like level all humans if they don't pass the test doesn't matter if you had a choice so it was kind of shitty you know those aliens it, it, but either way whatever uh let get past that um yeah and it turns out the disciples were right the, you know transcendence was real but yeah they were you know the the con their concept was that well they didn't really eliminate love as far as i know why am i doing that eliminate love I don't even know why I was doing that. Anyways, I think it was like they were they were their concept was if I remember right, it was like, not, you know, not to really just purely love individuals and protect this individual only. And, you know, my band of friends know only us. And everything. No, it was for the, good good of humanity. Humanity. the greater good, the greater good. <laughs> kind of bullshit and everything, which sounded very culty, obviously. But and they had a small point in that, you know, where they were the last of the human race and they were trying to fight for the rest of them. You know, like we, they were trying to be selflessness about it. But again, you, you really can't get past the fact that they were culty about it. Like you just can't. You just you know and like they they were even willing to do things that were just very inhuman to a degree i mean even fucking bill the goddamn leader granted like i mean bill kind of sounded like he kind of seemed like 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 this sci-fi show version of like thanos i guess that's how to put it like you know thanos you know or at least mcu thanos movie thanos uh you know he was going to save the universe by killing off half of it because he's already seen something that's going to happen I mean, to his own people that he cared about. They all died. He was like, hey, you're all going to die. But here, I got a solution and it's going to be a fair solution. I'm going to kill half of all of us. It'll be random. I won't be, you know, nobody will have a real choice in it or anything. And then, yeah, guess what? We survived. And everybody was like, fuck you, Thanos. You're a psycho. We're not going to listen to that and everything, you know. And guess what happened? His people died. That's why, that's what drove him to just keep going and like, okay, you know what? Screw it. I'm not giving you guys a choice. I'm just going to, you know, kill half of you anyways. And that's kind of what, yeah, it's not that much of a different concept with Bill in his, you know, in, in the hundred, like he believed in transcendence. He, he was trying to save what was left of his race. At least he was willing to just kind of, you know, the strongest will or how does that say? The hardest choices require the strongest will. Ah, whatever, screw it. Uh, you know what I'm getting at, though. You know, he was just kind of like, you know, the ends justifies the means kind of thing. And he was going to, instead of snap and kill half of all life, he was going to, yeah, transcend them into, you know, the pure consciousness, you know, things. Anyways, it's just kind of like, but uh, you still just can't get past it. You're like, Bill was just too much of a selfish brick about it. I mean, like, yeah, his biggest, not, I mean, maybe not biggest, but like one of his biggest, like, atrocities was what he did to Maddie. Like, that was fucked up. Like, he went and, like, she was even willing to help him. She was willing to help him so so that he wouldn't be keep going after her friends and, you know, and Clark and all of them. And she willingly did all that and everything. And he just kept burning further into her mind. And they were warning him, too. Like, hey, this hasn't been done before. We're, we're looking into her memories. We're going deep. And we could we could just fry her ass if we're not careful. He's just like, I don't give a fuck. Give me my goddamn code. You know, like, he just kept going. Like, he didn't have that little bit, you know, of, you know, oh, God, I'm about to, like, just ruin a kid's entire life even though he believed i understood he believed that she was going to transcend so you know again like she was just going to suffer for a little bit technically and then she would transcend and i guess they would meet in their little consciousness she'd be like oh my god thank you and he'd be like i know high five but that was still fucked up like really fucked up it's hard to judge clark because she's done all these things you know save her people when he's doing the same thing he he's definitely slaughtered his share of people you know left maddie as like practically a vegetable or just uh paralyzed completely just to save 
everybody. Yeah, and and plus it just pissed me off too because like his whole concept was like he was alive when the, the original Earth, you know, was destroyed by Ali. Like he got some kind of weird fair like early warning of it. And he uh went to that bunker, that's right, and then he had one of those stones. I don't quite remember how he got the stone, but he had the stone in the bunker. They were studying it the whole time, blah, 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 blah. And then, yeah, like after a while, uh, all the Becca stuff happens. He, you know, wants that, the flame that she has and then try, you know, kills her to get it. And then, you know, gets, gets it taken away by his daughter. So he goes and, you know, travels to what, Bardo, right? Yeah, Planet Bardo. I'm, I'm, just, I'm telling, I'm, I'm actually telling this to myself, not really to you and really, it's just so I can kind of remember. So he goes to Bardo and then, yeah, he just studies and explores and then eventually finds out that, yeah, he wants to do what Becca did. Go see these. Uh, I don't even think they explained what the alien beings were. They just there were judges or at least there was a judge. He wants to see that judge one to transcend. He figures out, you know, I think it's a real thing. And apparently eventually he goes on the same planet that Bellamy ended up on. But I mean, he did it. Uh, Bill did it way before. And. He apparently his pilgrimage, you know, learned that transcendence was was real. But see, that's what pisses me off because I'm like, Bill was, you know, a fanatical asshole too. Like, honestly, like if you had been allowed to take that test, I don't think he would have passed it either. Because, you know, he was a fucking liar. He he was perfectly fine letting all these people that followed him and everything just revere him as not even, not so much a god, but, you know, my shepherd. Oh, man. I, like, you know, like so basically a very, uh like, top tier, you know, religious figure. And he was fine with it. He just let it happen. And that's all. I was just like, you, 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 if you really believe in all this transcendent stuff, like, I mean, just let people know. No, he just, he was, he let it get into him. So he let it get to his head that he was, you know, a, his own mythological being. You haven't by any chance seen a morphological being lurking around here? A morphological being? Yeah. What the heck is that? Wait a second. Did it look something like this? <laughs> <laughs> Ew, gross. And you know, he would even even people who were on Bardo, they they stopped reproducing apparently. They were growing humans in labs. Granted, they were growing humans without any possible deficiencies or anything like that. So they were, you know, perfectly healthy humans. Sure, fine. But you know, he was growing them and he was immediately, you know, putting them in schools to basically know his lore his side of things and you know and to worship him about it all and yeah so dude you're a fucking cult like you're a, you're a psycho cult you might have the right concept of transcendence but you're still a psycho fucking cult i mean even like in the end like uh maddie suggests exactly you know the random thing they figured out for like hey friend of mine says that uh i you know your last war isn't even a real thing they never explain the last war they only explain, and, and, and I guess uh, that's right. They do explain, well, we don't know what we'll be up against. So that's what we're training for everything like this, that we're training. We're just, you know, and that's the, that's why they got to be that level 12 disciples. They were apparently like badass, like, you know, Navy SEAL types that could just take on any mission and survive. It's just kind of like, where did you get, where did you get the concept of last war? Last war against who? And like, they, they just knew that whatever the original race of Bardowins, you know, they fought this new as other some other race some other random mysterious race and lost i don't know it was just weird it was just a weird concept like you know they just nobody wanted to actually explain they were just like it's just it's the last war we have to win it we're going to win it and we're going to you know this is for the good of humanity the greater good, the greater good. Blah, 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 blah. so bill this whole time has been preaching to everybody that there is a war that needs to be fought and it's going to be the last one, blah, 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 blah. So, and then Maddie suggests to him, well, yeah, uh, we don't think it's actually a last war. We think it's just a test. In, in maybe the war itself is a test, or maybe you're just simply taking it. Somebody's taking a test for some reason, and, and you'll still get what you want. You know, you'll still transcend. You'll still save humanity. And Bill just kind of like, well, maybe, you know, like that, that's what pissed me off. Like, like at that time and everything, he he didn't like, he didn't either a go like, you know, full religious nun and like, no, what we believe in is what we believe in. And you know, our law, our religion is law right now. We, you know, you're not, you're sacrilegious. You're a heathen. You know, he didn't pull all that shit. No, which is fine. I'm glad he didn't. But he, um, he, I just says, he didn't even like really bat an eye too much. He like, oh, eh, if it's a test, oh, well, less people die. Like, dude. It, you created a whole religion. You created a whole following of people 
that were designed and raised from birth to be soldiers who trained for a war and you just found out that it, you know everything you you train them on might not be so and you're just like eh, okay cool well at least we'll still transcend like whoa do you like he didn't stop to think about that for a second like no which means he was it, it got to it tells me that he it got to his head he was still you know willing he just wanted to get to the end of the tunnel didn't really care if he was wrong about everything he just wanted to be right about transcendent that i don't know He's just, he's an asshole. Let's just, you know, accept it. And he's just a total asshole about it and everything. Even if he was a little bit right. Uh, the one thing that I, I know I'm pretty sure pissed off a lot of people was Bellamy. And I mean, it was annoying to me too. One, cause they gave him a comic book style death. And I mean, for anybody who doesn't know that, if you, come on, you should, this is 2020, you should know comic book style death. Where basically it's like, oh, the character, you know, sort of dies, usually like an explosion or something obscure. That you don't see their body as always the big hint you never see the body you never see like a funeral or anything like that like with the body you know they always they might bury a tombstone or something with nobody anyways and yeah you know i can't believe character is dead someone else is going to come on screen like oh yeah character is dead totally dead Ugh. Ugh. Whew, need some water hold on okay got my water that was good talking too much okay so bellamy had his his comic book death and you know it turns out he was just blasted you know into a portal that sent him to another planet with a disciple and you know it took him a while but they had to work together and you know since bellamy's only like form of any communication or entertainment or anything like that was to read a you know disciple bible and talk to a you know disciple follower uh you know it, i mean it was kind of getting into bellamy's head and everything especially because he was on the brink of death he was just sur barely surviving and he was on a pilgrimage himself and early just to get back to his friends and then yeah bellamy saw those glowing beings which turned out to be people who are not people but just some race that already transcended bellamy looked went into there or touched it i guess and just you know just just you, you watch the show he he was able to believe holy shit transcendence is real you know we, we we should do this you know the disciple guys are somewhat right but see that's what this is the concept that the show went wrong in is that they had Bellamy betray his friends and become a disciple. And I mean, he just had his nose right up Bill's ass and everything about it. And no, sorry, like I, nobody wanted to swallow that. Nobody wanted like that. It felt like he was just brainwashed at that point. And see, the thing is, I, I was fine up until that point. Like, honestly, I was totally like, it should have gone up to that way. Bellamy saw that trans transcendence was real, came back and honestly, now, let me should have survived till the end of the very end of the show and everything to basically be that middle ground, that middle ground character of being with his friends, with Clark and all of them. And because he's always because by the by the end last season, he's just a, a tired soldier. He's tired of killing and he's killed so many people. He's responsible for a lot of grief and everything, too, and everything. But he, you know, he's just similar to Clark. He just wants to protect people. And, and just unfortunately, he's always put as everybody in this freaking show is always put in a situation where, hey, you or your and or your friends die or we you know or, or you know you commit a giant atro atrocity and they you all don't so yeah like anyways so it sucks for him you know he's weary of it like i said he should have spent like the rest of the series not being a fucking weird kiss ass you know cultist who drank the kool-aid no you should have just been with clark and all them most of the time and everything but like look it's real what he's talking about is real you know even if he couldn't fully explain it like i just you know i had an experience and it was real and then the rest of the show should have had clark and all of them like whoa bellamy you're being weird but but you know thanks for being back and everything like, you know blah 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 you know and like even to the point where bellamy was even like trying to be uh switzerland you know basically you know being like common ground with bill too and everything maybe even bill being with bill or you know not betraying his fucking friends that he's been fighting for this whole goddamn time but just you know trying to convince bill like hey don't kill my friends either you know i i want to help you in this but bill was being a little bit of you know should have been a a little bit of a pushy asshole I'm not trying to kill them but like look you know because he's he's a cultist i mean honestly how i think the show should have ended i mean should have been uh one big key factor was bellamy lived until the end it would have changed i mean you got to change a few story elements because you know some characters reacted and were doing things because of bellamy's uh supposed death at first and um oh no because i guess never mind okay so that's right so they uh, he wasn't back yet so let me reverse myself when he finally comes back he's not a you know kiss ass you know whatever he he la lasts to the end and whenever there's that like last you know 
final battle of you know this which is like the remaining grounders and um all the rest of the disciples it should have instead of octavia coming out in the middle of the field like viewing the hey hey we're the last what are we doing we're a bunch of assholes why are we doing this you know we're the last of the ra human race and we're just gonna keep this cycle of death up should have been him it should have been him it should have been bellamy coming out there you know because he was been trying this whole show unsuccessfully or the whole season unsuccessfully bringing about like hey guys we need to get together we need we need to do this this is actually a real thing and finally he goes out there in that field in between all of them risking his own life because somebody anybody could just shoot him right then and there and trying to tell them you know like to get them to stop firing now uh real quick you know they had the whole shade head arc and everything you know dark commander just an asshole that just keeps surviving you know and honestly i mean he, he was kind of a kind of a corny villain in, in season seven he wasn't bad but you know he just kind of seemed to be there for a lot of plot convenience and stuff like that but whatever I mean, it wasn't a big deal but just like how uh i don't remember the the guy that was helping octavia's name at the moment but you know it's, it, like you know shade hitter shoots him and like in during a cease during a small ceasefire in order to like, kind of hey you know what are you assholes doing keep shooting you know shade hitter comes out of nowhere is that like, no see that should have been a thing it shouldn't have been the random guy i don't remember his name at the night time and it shouldn't have been octavia doing the speech it should have been bellamy out there and that would have been bellamy's like ultimate sacrifice is that shade hit a shot and, and killed bellamy he died like a martyr's death right there because uh like shade hit a like because okay, it's even more interesting if you think about this clark fails the test and the judge alien is going to just be like, OK, well, you guys aren't worth it. You know, you're all going to be dead crystal guys or whatever. And Raven goes and, you know, tries to convince her. No, change your mind, please. Just leave us more time. And then they're they're observing all the final battle and the alien. The alien judge is just trying to, you know, still be like, uh, look, look at these people. See, you're right. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm right. You know that like, you know, everybody's just going to kill each other in the end y'all aren't worth it y'all should just die right now no they should be observing and then they should see bellamy you know preaching about it and all and like that should be like that beacon of hope and bellamy will die a martyr right there and then they'll see shadehead as that one kind of final obstacle because he's really trying to spark that war back up to you know gain dominance because that's just all he knows and so after he kills bellamy honestly i would imagine octavia just running out there and like challenging him like indra goes and like uh challenged him originally already no, it's honestly, it, it would have been fucking awesome to see. Uh, I mean, it would have been sad to see Bellamy die, but that's a fucking awesomely heroic death of him just trying to do it. He was right the whole time. And, you know, he was almost he was almost like the deciding factor in saving the human race for a moment. And then he gets unfortunately killed and Octavia challenges Shave Heda to a battle. And I mean, honestly, it should have just been a kick ass fight. You know, Blood Reina versus Shade Heda, you know, like that would have been fucking cool. And just, I just want to see, like, because I mean, Blood Reina was someone who, you know, Octavia, who went into her deep darkness and everything because she had kind of had to, you know, it was just, it was a lot for her character to take in. And she sort of washed that away, you know, ashamed of that she wants to be better, as opposed to a person like the, you know, Shade Heda, the Dark Matter, who's just like, I am just an eternal asshole. I mean, what do you want from me? uh so oh, they should have gone at it she should have won the fight obviously you know in the end and see the thing is like instead of one winning and killing him she she is also that second extra like kick-ass factor of helping raven prove to the judge that humans are are not total garbage because octavia yeah that's the perfect moment right here for her to kill shade hitter right she just he just killed bellamy in this scenario well no like let's i i i can imagine like her like practically disabling him i don't forget cutting off his whoa that's not my good good anyways cutting off like let's say his hand like you know or whatever and, and making him like disabling the crap out of him or anything and maybe even like cutting the tendon in his leg so he can't even stand up right like he's basically impairing him for the rest of his life He's never going to fight again, basically. And she just, you know, she, she should kill him. We all kind of want him to because that motherfucker killed Bellamy. I shouldn't. Do it. And no, she just decides not to. She's tired of the you know violence area, even though he is the ultimate asshole and he is extremely dangerous to keep alive because he's going to keep trying. But no, she doesn't. And that, you know, the alien judge peoples take notice of this and they're like, oh, maybe people are worth it, you know, because y'all aren't just 
ruthless killers constantly. I mean, hell, I don't know. I mean, as for what happens to Shade Hitter, I mean, whether he, you know, transcends or not in the end, like, I mean, hell, if you don't want him to transcend, you can even imagine him realizing, you know, fuck it, you know, I am disabled. I am never going to, you know, be up again or anything. And you can even imagine the grounders losing complete faith in him because, I mean, most of the religion has just gone down the pooper anyways because, hey, uh, you know, like everything's just gone. Like commanders are gone and everything, you know, Dark Commander is kind of a weird remnant so nobody believes in him no more so he kills himself screw it the last of like you know the many murders you know warmongers is gone in that sense and then they still transcend they they transcend you know unfortunately knowing that bellamy won't join them even though he was right the whole time but it was you know he only died moments before it he didn't die just in some weird cultist moment and everything with you know clark and that would have been a cool arc i think for him you know from what he's become he was trying to be as selfless as possible and uh you know follow as much passive pacifism as he could to ultimately achieve that uh i mean raven's arc i think was great um, i mean I, I wish she could have had a little bit more to herself but i mean it's fine uh she did good i always thought it was weird that like in the last season she let her hair down like all the way and she looked like a freaking supermodel oh my god Woo, my stars but uh yeah in this one she tied it back up I'm like huh i don't know why you didn't let her hair down random anyways going outside but as for octavia i i mean she i think she was fine i think her arc was actually pretty good too and everything um Gyozo's death was actually pretty sad i guess like and, and murphy murphy was probably had like the coolest character arc of all of that and like especially in that season coming from like a complete asshole in the first season you know uh getting all the shit treated and everything to just barely surviving constantly to just being he was awesome dude i hats off to that guy he he pulled it off great and i mean it was a sad what happened to amori i was really sad about that but i was glad that she survived in the end blah, blah, blah. and yeah in the end i mean i i feel like clark should have just uh it would have been kind of interesting to see like the whole concept of transcendence happen and clark still didn't get to go as her punishment for being a murderer during the test and honestly she would you know to just be interesting to see that she uh that, i mean kind of like what they were hinting at at first that she just was stuck on all on her own i mean or she was the last human alive basically and i mean that's it you know she was the end of the human race <laughs> I mean, like, that would have been sad because, uh, is Eliza Taylor? I mean, I, I, I like her and, and I love Clark as a character and everything. It was very, it's just a very tragic character indeed. And it would have been, like, in a sense, like, very sad to know that she, she was the last one and she was just doomed. I mean, I mean, she went and just, you know, grew up to an old lady and she just was doomed to, you know, be alone and everything. But, I mean, it would have been kind of a fitting poetic, you know, ending in a sense to, to the character. I mean, it would have been sad, but I, I would have been fine with it. Instead of the weird, like, uh, oh, well, some, nobody's ever, you know, rejected Transcendence, but these, your friends did. And also they can't have kids. So you really are still the last. It, like, it was just kind of like, that just seemed kind of like a weird attempt, I guess, by the writers to make it a, you know, happy little bow. Like, oh, it's okay. Clark, you know, smiles again. The, you know, her friends join her. I don't know like it just seems weird i mean even even with murphy's character like i mean you know with him being a badass hero like i was mentioning like by the end of it all like i mean he was like this close to like selling out i mean he actually did practically sell out his friends to achieve that kind of immortality and now he got it and then he was just like well i guess i'll just go you know yeah, forego this this immortality and you know life of no pain for you know spending a few more years with my friends fuck it and i was just like oh dude i mean it would have been fine it would have i i'm pretty sure anybody even clark would have understood why people decided to stay transcended and everything that would have been fine like it made sense for maddie to say transcended like it was fine it's, yeah so it was just like a weird like you know trying to tie, tie it up with a neat bow but i think yeah honestly that should have been like uh, clark was just that tragic hero who kept having to make those bad choices for everybody and guess and, and that kind of in a sense makes to me her slightly better than bill because that's like clark and bill seem like two sides of like the same coin in a sense like you know of how they went about things but they were just ultimately trying to achieve basically the similar goal or anything in a sense and basically she ended up achieving bill's goal that she got everybody to trans i mean she led everybody to eventually be transit transcended she wasn't trying to but it, you know her actions got it got them there and yeah like eventually she was the one to pay the price for it all she had to be a live alone and forever so yeah otherwise uh good series i mean i'm, I'm more interested in like kind of rewatching it maybe one of these years because i got like a trillion shows to watch right now but uh it was pretty cool i'm fine with it i wouldn't you know wouldn't mind uh 
revisiting and like learning a few more things i feel like i might have missed certain concepts about it i really wish they would have gotten more into um a little bit more backstory with al not ali uh, uh becca because they show her you know i mean she had a really pretty tragic story too how she was unintentionally responsible for the destruction of earth i mean how they brought her back in season seven, season seven and then yeah it just kind of like you know she just uses a quick little foothold to some things and i don't know i wish i would have gotten more into that her character is actually pretty interesting to me and callie that's right that's what i was trying to remember the other one um it, that kind of annoyed me that they just brought her up just for a few things and they i mean you it it is kind of left up to like you can piece together what her character does throughout the series they do mention throughout the series in little tidbits of what Callie, you know, does. They become the grounders, like, you know, back in the day. Like, they they refused Bill's bullshit, you know, religious, you know, cult shit. They, they were actually Nightbloods themselves, thanks to uh, Becca, and they decided to go out into the world. They breeded grounders, and the world gradually lost its, you know, massive radiation for the most part. So grounders were able to, you know, go. And then some grounders were Nightbloods, some just born normal people. It happened and you know it would just you know, it would have been nicer if they would have gone a little bit more just not like a lot they don't have to dedicate entire episodes or seasons to it but just a little more into like you know just them establishing uh like you know like the commanders a little bit more and establishing just rounder clans a little bit like how they spread out and everything like that you know all we know is tree crew which ended up standing for becca not becca's uh callie's original group that she was in tree crew and you know but yeah i mean it's not hard it's not hard to piece it all together but i would i just wish they would have gotten a little more into it i wish bellamy didn't die in such a stupid way because he was actually one of the best characters in there he deserved better otherwise cool i yeah like, i mean if anybody wants to talk about it a little more let me know i mean it's interesting to get a hold of everything to to whenever a series or arc finishes it's really like my i love going back to the beginning and trying to figure out where the writers or you know creators were first thinking about all this area and everything when when you got hints of where this was going like you know like i talked about the mcu earlier you know where up until from the beginning of iron man all the way to the end game i guess technically you know where the writers kind of were giving hints about things that come to come for end game as early as you know the early movie so it, it's really cool to come to come to that and uh yeah i'm, I'm totally looking at I'm looking forward to discussing cool shit like this with everybody, especially since the show is over. It's so nice when shows end. Walking Dead, that's why I stopped watching you. You dragged on. This show dragged on at some points, but it ended. Please end. You can't go on forever. I remember when Walking Dead showrunners were so into themselves and had their heads so far up their asses sometimes about things. And they were even like bragging like, this show can go on for 20 seasons if we want to. I'm like, oh God. Oh, because it is, you know, one thing I complain about in shows like like this one or even The Walking Dead, when they have like major characters die off is oftentimes they'll have major characters just survive a trillion things. And it becomes less believable in these shows when when characters are just surviving things just because they're they're popular with fans. You know, it, it detracts from the story a little bit. And plus, it makes the dangers in those stories just much less threatening because, you know, they're just, you know, villains turn into just something for the hero to punch. And nobody likes that, you know? You want to know that the, the hero always has that chance to die or get screwed in certain shows like these. Some of them are like a more lighthearted fight. It's fine. We can believe that certain characters are just immortal peoples that just could stand there and never die. Anyways, uh, I'm ranting. I'm going off on too much, but I mean, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind like doing more things like that. Like what I would, uh, what I would do to change not really bad writing in shows or movies, but what I would do to change, you know, to maybe make it better and everything like star Wars. Oh God, I could, I got plenty of ideas. I could do, you know, things, ways I could do for star Wars, uh, all of it all together. Well, except for the classic trilogy. I love you guys. I know. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys later and then let me know what you think. Just do it! Do it.